Hello everyone, hope you're having the most wonderful day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. For today's video, we're going to discuss some of the worst hotels featured on Hotel Hell and reveal how they're doing now. So, sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get right into the content guys. Brick Hotel In a season 3 episode, Gordon Ramsay heads over to the Brick Hotel in Newtown, Pennsylvania to bring it back on its feet. Owned by therapist Verendar Carr and her son CJ, they purchased the business back in 2006 believing it would be a great investment opportunity. Told by the previous owners that it was a hands-off business and that it would run by itself, this was far from the truth. Struggling to generate any profits, the owners often cut corners and their staff turnover was extremely high. So high to the point that over the course of 8 months they went through 50 different staff members with some only lasting one shift. The biggest issue is that Verendar acts like a dictator and makes it clear that it's her way or the highway. Due to this, the hotel's reputation is pretty abysmal in the community and people generally avoid it. Needing some guidance before the business closes down for good, the owners call out to Ramsey for some much needed help. Instead of going straight to the hotel like in previous episodes, Ramsey meets with some of the former employees to get their input. Most express that the hotel isn't really that bad, but the largest problem is Verendar who scares everyone away. What's worse, she wouldn't pay the staff on time and when one of them complained, she called the cops on them. How crazy is that? Anyway, Ramsey later heads over to the hotel and notices that the windows on the front entrance are smashed, the wallpaper is peeling off, and there are bullet holes in the wall. Checking into his room, he finds tons of mold practically everywhere, yellow pillowcases and filthy curtains. Nasty. Hoping to have a better experience at the hotel's restaurant, Ramsey sits down and orders a french onion soup, a cauliflower steak, a crab sandwich, and a burger. Predictably, everything tastes awful, so the Hotel Hell host heads into the kitchen and is shocked to learn that there isn't a head chef. Later on, Ramsey does a bacteria test and gets a disgustingly high rating of 5,680 on the shower curtains. Immediately pulling the fire alarm and evacuating the hotel, Ramsey meets with the staff and Verendar starts to blame everyone but herself for the issues present. Pulling CJ aside, he admits that his mom wants to step back and spend more time with her family, so Ramsey puts him in charge of things. After making tons and tons of renovations, both the lobby and the rooms got an aesthetic overhaul and the menu was updated to include easy to make but delicious food. Upon the Brick's eventual relaunch, locals were invited to the dinner service but also got a tour of the new and improved hotel. Post hotel hell, the business's reputation was slowly starting to improve thanks to the fact that CJ was running things. This allowed for Verendo to sit back and let the staff do their jobs which consequently brought their employee turnover to an all time low. Several months later, the hotel's manager responded online to certain criticisms by saying that they had a large renovation planned. Though, things weren't looking very good since the reviews on Yelp and TripAdvisor were mostly negative. Ironically, they did end up selling the business and Brick Hotel was renamed to Rocco's at the Brick which has really mixed reviews. Cambridge Hotel Paying a visit to the historic Cambridge Hotel in Cambridge, New York, Gordon Ramsay hopes to restore it back to its glory days. The hotel has 16 bedrooms and a massive restaurant that's been operating for more than 150 years. Owned by ex-serviceman and local lawyer John Imhoff and his wife Tina, he bought the hotel in 2007 with the help of his family. Most of the staff complain about the fact that John is a humongous control freak and is very hands-on. Being $750,000 in debt and Tina refusing to dish out any more of the family's money into the hotel, they call out to Ramsey for some help. Upon his eventual arrival to the hotel, Ramsey notices that there's an odd rest in peace sign out front. Shown to his room, the Hotel Hell host is met with an overwhelming amount of floral decor, thinks the towels are rough, and sees tons of holes in the sheets. Meeting with the owners, they reveal that they haven't had any experience prior to owning the Cambridge, which is very clear. Things have gotten so bad to the point that the couple might have to move into the third floor of the building due to their inability to pay for their own home. Going down to the restaurant to sample some of the food, he orders some pork and beans, duck, and the pie à la mode. Not only were the first two meals cold upon being served, the pie, which is the restaurant's unique selling point, was microwaved, leaving Ramsey feeling disappointed. Calling the staff together, Ramsey learns that John is at the root of the problem since the staff can't do anything without running it by him first. On top of him being dictatorial, he doesn't even know what he's doing and brushes off any of the suggestions made. The following day, the famous chef calls in some of the hotel's paying guests to give their complaints directly to the owner, hoping to open John's eyes. Some say they found stray hairs all over the bedroom, had broken door locks, and most expressed that they would never return again. A while later, Ramsey heads up to the top floor which is supposedly haunted and is horrified by the look of the rooms but has an idea in mind for the hotel's makeover. After a lot of discussion and renovations, Ramsey revealed the new and improved Cambridge to the staff which was completely modernized. In terms of the rooms, Ramsey gave them beautiful wooden floors and white drapes to tone down the awful floral wallpaper. 
Additionally, he provided them with $75,000 worth of linen and towels to replace the old and rough ones. Taking the staff downstairs, Ramsey introduces them to the Alamad room where the chefs receive a new apple pie recipe. The restaurant's prep cook Scooter, who's always dreamed of making pastries and owning a bakery of his own, teared up at the thought of serving Ramsey's improved pie to the guests. As the customers quickly pour into the restaurant and taste test the food, they're impressed with how fresh and delicious it is. Thanks to the renovations made, the staff seemed to have a massive morale boost and were excited about what the future might hold. Following their appearance on the show, while they did get many reviews, the ones that they did receive were mostly positive. However, back in June of 2012, the Cambridge Hotel was placed in foreclosure and was purchased by the bank. Officially selling the building at an auction for $350,000, it was converted into an assisted living residence. Ramsey spent quite a bit on this rescue, so this is a pretty big failure. Four Seasons In For our final entry, we're going to discuss a hotel Gordon Ramsay visited called Four Seasons In. Owned by a former construction worker named Sandy McDougall, the inn has 14 rooms and a dog kennel. Having spent over $1 million since opening the place, McDougall's incapable of paying staff due to the lack of funds. Rather than pay them with real money, the owner lets them stay for free at the end, but this leaves less room for paying customers. Really needing some help, McDougall calls out to Ramsey, who arrives expecting the luxury 5-star chain Four Seasons Hotel, but is greeted with something quite different. Upon entering the inn, he notices that the reception is empty and sees an untidy dog bed lying around. McDougall eventually escorts him to his room, which has an unmade bed and clearly hasn't been cleaned. Embarrassed, the owner brings him to another room which has tacky looking wallpaper, leaving Ramsey feeling unimpressed. Heading down to the restaurant to grab some lunch, hoping it will at least be better than the rooms, he thinks that the food is uninspired so he feeds it to the dog. After his bland meal, Ramsey heads into the kitchen and is greeted by Steve who expresses that he has no control over the menu or the ingredients that are purchased. Soon after, Steve goes into a complete breakdown and tells Ramsey that he's embarrassed with the current situation in the kitchen and is ashamed with the meals that he's serving. Since the word got around that Ramsey was visiting the inn, many locals decided to visit the restaurant and check in. As a result of the unusual influx of customers, the servers were forced to check in guests during the dinner service which caused a lot of issues. McDougall hilariously asked patrons if they were enjoying their meals and he was justifiably met with laughter and complaints. The following morning, Ramsey points out that the standards are extremely low since the pillows have an awful smell and the swimming pool has dog poop floating in it. Hoping to give the owner a new perspective, he forces him to come face to face with some of the customers who checked in. Many of them complain about the poor customer service and the fact that dogs are allowed in the dining room. To really hammer things home, Ramsey brings out the black light in front of all of the guests and shows that the pillows, sheets, mattress, and rug are covered in fluids. Thankfully, McDougall finally began to understand how much he's been neglecting the inn and vowed to change. It was then that Ramsey was able to start working his magic, starting by renaming the place to Layla's Riverside Lodge. Following Ramsey's intervention, the lodge's bookings went up significantly and McDougall received tons of positive reviews from viewers. To this very day, the lodge is up and running and continues to get good feedback from those who decide to stay. Well, that'll be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a great one, guys.